This is 1.4, and it's the formal limit definition, and it's where we do our epsilon delta proofs. I'm going to break this up into two videos. The first video will be on linear proofs, and the second one will be on a quadratic function. Okay, to start off with, our definition, and this is just an intuitive definition, it's not the formal definition of a limit. We have the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to l, a limit. What that means So again, when x is near a, and you can see as x approaches a, then the y value is near the limit. And just to note, f of a does not have to exist for the limit to exist. So we're going to talk about epsilon and delta. And correspondingly, this is important, e for epsilon, d for delta. So this is, so remember x, y, alphabetical order. So d, this is a plus delta. And this one is a minus delta. So we're making this open interval around a. And the corresponding y value, this is my l. Remember, it's not f of a. It doesn't have to be. Could, but it doesn't have to be. And this interval up here in the y value is our L minus our epsilon and our L minus plus our epsilon. So it's an interval, it's an epsilon away from L and a delta away from A. So when we're delta, so when we're near A, by the way, epsilon and delta are distances and they're very small distances. This distance is delta, so when x is a delta away from a, then y is an epsilon away from l. Now before I get into my actual formal definition, just a little bit of a notation here. If I wanted to find the distance between two points, and if I knew the points, well, you would just subtract them. For example, the distance between 2 and 5, the points 2 and 5. Well, we know it's 5 minus 2, they're 3 away, so we subtract. But if you don't know the values, and let's say I subtracted it backwards, if I subtract it to find the distance, well, I know I get minus 3, so I can take the absolute value of it. So when you subtract two values and you take the absolute value, you're finding the distance between the two points. So now our formal definition. So again, this limit means that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a corresponding delta greater than zero. So we can find them. Delta will be able to be written in terms of epsilon such that if this inequality is true, meaning, remember, this is the distance between x and a. The distance between x and a is small. It's smaller than delta. If that's true, then the distance between the function and the limit is smaller than epsilon. So that's the formal definition. And just a note here, this being strictly greater than zero just means that x shouldn't equal to a. So it just means that x is near a, but not equal to a. So there's going to be two parts to proving delta to epsilon proofs, to proving limits. The first part is discovering delta. And again, we're trying to find delta in terms of the given epsilon. Because remember, it says there exists, once you or know that there's an epsilon, greater than zero, there exists a corresponding delta. We need to find that corresponding delta. Then the second part is, our, is proving the discovery that it works. 
i.e. we're proving the second part of this proof, this one right here. You want to prove the f of x minus l is less than epsilon, but it's given the, sec the first part, 0, given that that distance is less than delta. So we're going to do our first epsilon delta proof. Okay, so our first part is discovery. It's kind of, it's kind of like scratch work. So pretty much what we're going to be doing to find it is we're going to work backwards from what we're trying to prove. So we're going to have to write that part that we want to prove out in order to discover what that epsilon and delta is. So I also like to write out the given first too. So we're going to write out if. So it's x minus a here. It's x approaches 4, so a is equal to 4. This is my f of x. My f of x is equal to 3x minus 7. And last but not least, my l is equal to 5. So it's x minus a, x minus 4, remember those are close, is less than delta, then... Again, we want f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Writing that out, it's 3x minus 7, if you want to wrap it, minus 5 is less than epsilon. And working backwards, because this is what we want to prove. So working backwards. So minus 7 minus 5. And we can pull out that 3 because it's positive. And look here, we kind of have some of it. So maybe we want to isolate that x minus 4, divide by 3. So it looks like we found our corresponding delta. So we are going to choose delta equal to epsilon over 3. Okay, so now, again, that one was my scratch work. We didn't prove anything. We just found the delta that's going to work. So now we're going to do our formal proof. This is our second part. And our formal proof, we just pretty much started writing it. We're going to choose delta equals epsilon over 3. Be given. We're also given this. And we can drop that 0. So now we want to prove, I'm going to write this out so we can see it. So if I want to prove this, I need to start with the left-hand side and transform it to the right and show that the left-hand side is less than epsilon. And we're going to be using the given at some point. That's how the inequality will come into play. So we start with the left-hand side. So we start with, just simplify it algebraically. So it's kind of a big string of equals. Since we know this is true, well, what happens if I multiply both sides by the 3? Then we have less than 3 delta. See that? Well, now I can use my given. That's 3 times epsilon over 3, because delta is epsilon over 3. And those 3s cancel, and that's epsilon. And it looks like we've proved it. We have less than epsilon and this. So that's a QED since x minus 4 is less than delta. Now, if you haven't seen QED, it's Latin for basically it has been shown. That's all I'm going to do on this video. I will have a part two where I do one more linear and then I'll do a quadratic. Okay, thanks for watching.